What's going on everyone? Let's do a NFT update for today. It is currently the 27th um, in most of the world. It's actually the 28th here in Melbourne, but we're going to run with the 27th. Um, I apologize for some background noise. You might be feel, hearing something weird, but, but hopefully it's negligible. Let's start with OpenSea. This news actually came out yesterday, but basically you can use wrapped BTC on the NFT platform. So if you're not familiar with OpenSea, you should be because they are the probably the most dominant and most OG NFT marketplaces that currently exists, um, especially Ethereum based marketplace. There's multiple marketplaces actually on different chains. Uh, Wax has their own engine, has their own, but uh, a lot of volume happens on OpenSea. Um, some companies even run their pre-sales on OpenSea and um, you know, they've been in the space for quite a while. So now when buying NFTs and if you know, how NFTs work, you know that, you know, you can buy some art from super rare maybe, and then you could sell it on an, a platform like OpenSea. And that's the benefit of having a NFT is that you can take it across platforms to uh, different platforms that do different things. So you can buy it on uh, super rare displayed in Decentraland, sell it in OpenSea. There's a lot you can do because it's an NFT. But what that actually means is, uh, yeah, having wrapped BTC ava available as a payment option, um, how it works is it's effectively like having Bitcoin now able to do payments, not directly though. You have to wrap that Bitcoin first. So you have to trade it in to a, for an ERC-20 equivalent. So I think it basically locks up your Bitcoin and gives you an ERC-20 that represents this Bitcoin, which you can use across the platform. And, and that's kind of backed by that Bitcoin, right? Um, WBTC, Rack Bitcoin is kind of used across many, many platforms. A lot of our DeFi apps, for example, Uniswap, which was here somewhere. Where is Uniswap? There it is, Uniswap. So you can, you know, Uniswap, it's one of like the, the biggest pairs over there. Uniswap, uh, sorry, Bitcoin and USD, uh, etc. So, got this thing. Um, that's great news. It is the start of what probably is going to bring a lot of Bitcoin to the space. And Bitcoin, as you know, has a dominant share of the virtual currency. And if any of that starts to move towards the NFT space, then hold on to your seats. We are going parabolic. Um, so Decentraland kicked off their Halloween event that um, is basically a treasure hunt. You can run around and find stuff over the next five days. And it's going to give you popes. You can collect popes. Um, you can see people running around doing stuff. Uh, you'll have to hunt around for treasure chests. You'll have to fight some monsters, etc. And uh, in the process, you'll be able to claim different types of wearables. So you can see these are the wearables that this person you can claim and you can go to rewards.decentraland.org once you've played the games and claim these as wearables. But if you look at this website here that uh, is, surprise, surprise, it's my website, dclpulse.com. I'm trying to make some sort of a, sort of a um, wearables uh, summarizing, you know, a bit of data and analytics in uh, display. But if you order this by days old, it actually picks up the wearables. I think this is set to mythics only. So let's go to all um, days old. So this picks up all the most recent on-chain wearables that have been released. And this is a cool way to kind of see some of the wearables before everyone else finds out. Uh, once you do this, you can see there's some mythic boots. So here you have evil cult supreme boots. Helmet of Supreme Evil Cult. So I don't know who's going to be able to get all of these because there's only 10 of each of these. Um, if you pick them up, it's going to be pretty cool. But uh, yeah, it looks like these are the wearables that are available to be won. So you got these as well. Um, Ghost Blaster Night Vision Device. Ghost Blaster Pants. Looks pretty cool. It's kind of like Ghost, uh, Ghost Busters, I, I guess. Dracula Mouth. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, you can win those wearables and they have value because, you know, most of these wearables, especially the mythics, um, if we kind of check that out, uh, God, hold up. It's very difficult to aggregate all of these prices. Okay. So if you check out the mythics, just traditional mythics. So these are obviously the, the, the highest market cap ones, but, um, uh, average price, they usually go for, you know, five to 10,000 mana. Um, the most recent sale, recent sale. 5,000 mana, some of them going pretty cheap, but you know, between five and 10,000 mana conservatively, let's go to the second page and see how that's doing. Uh, 6,000, 7,000 mana. So yeah, even if you see a drop, um, it's still holding that kind of 5,000. Maybe you see something less than 5,000. This one sold for 3,000 mana recently. 
as an outlier. It was more of an outlier, but yeah, five thousand mana seems somewhere decent. So if you can grab one of these mythics, then uh, yeah, that's like somewhere between four to eight thousand mana that you've just got along with the other prizes. Um, that's the Decentraland for you. Metalympic. So this is a really cool initiative by a couple of different projects. The Whip Meetup, um, Avastars, uh, Whale Shark Pro. So a couple of different projects have probably come together to help her build this out. But this kind of exists in CryptoVoxels. So if you don't know CryptoVoxels yet, um, you should, because they've been around for a very, 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 very long time. Um, but they're basically like a kind of, you can own virtual land and build your own uh, things there and people build galleries and it looks like, you know, they're starting to build things like this. Um, looks, I don't know how functional it is, but uh, it looks very, very well built. Um, I think you can kind of do little simple things like run and race and stuff like that. And maybe even some, there's also some scripting, I believe. Um, but yeah, that's very interesting to see this sort of um, content being created because, you know, digital spaces, they're very, very ambitious projects. So although the value proposition of what they could be is amazing, they're not going to be anywhere near that um, anytime soon unless there's a high level of content being built. So whether, whether that's Metalympics or other content that you're seeing that is driving, you know, your interest, hopefully eventually there's going to be hundreds of these types of contents being built on these platforms and being used. That's what's really going to drive the push towards uh, people using these spaces. Nifty Gateway are doing a drop. So Beeple is coming this Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I think that's Eastern Standard Time. And if you don't know people, you have definitely come across five, five uh, different NFTs. And yeah, if you don't know people, you should, because he's been pretty much, so 13 years of everyday art free creative commons and visuals so it's it's free to use is that what he's saying mm -hmm. so he's selling this art um for the first time but an artist like him 1.7 million followers bringing attention to nfts i think will bring a lot of artists to the space but also what it might do is bring the average price of nfts over across because you have to balance um the artists with the collectors um if there isn't enough collector money then there's a lot of artists, then you're just going to see a lot of flooding in the space where now there's millions, now there's like hundreds and hundreds of really good artists and therefore maybe there's not that much money now keeping up with the space. Um, so the money has to come in at a, a rate where it's growing the platform, right? Because it's a demand supply thing. So it'll be interesting to see how it'll calibrate um, and the data or the, or the sales will kind of uh, affect be affected by artists like this or many, many artists like this um, entering the scene. Now, a shout out to a couple of projects that are doing some work um, and donating some stuff to charity. So, Danil Pan, uh, I would a thousand percent be down to host live auctions in the Art Gallery Auction House. Um, Telegram with zero commissions and all funds going to a donation effort to end SARS. I think they went ahead with that, so it looks like uh, November 3rd to November 6th, we'll be auctioning donated artworks live at 1155 Art Gallery, which I believe is an engine-based art gallery, and uh, the donates and the proceeds will go to NSARS. So that's that. That's, um, you know, a cool initiative. We also have a couple of other projects that have done similar work. Um, so we had Don't Buy Rope. This is kind of old news, October 17th. What's that? About two weeks ago now? No, 10 days ago now. 69 ETH donated to um, Save the Children Foundation, all raised from so, uh, 30 minutes of selling three limited edition NFTs. Oh, 23 NFTs, three different limited ed editions, I think. So 25K is no small number. And a lot of that was donated to, uh, all of that was donated to Save the Children. And uh, to me and to the wider world, I think incorporating some sort of um, channel bridge to bring that uh you know distribute that wealth that is being attracted by efforts like art and DeFi, etc and pushing that towards on-chain provable 
uh, ideally on-chain provable funding mechanisms where you can see where it's going and, and confirm that so-and-so has um, donated that. In fact, just recently, I think there was like this um, big issue in this influencer from Sri Lanka and or maybe some other country who did this raise for a fund and was like raising funds for uh, a cause over there. And it recently came out that she didn't donate any of it. So, you know, stuff like this is important because you want to know that the money you're donating is going to the right person, uh, right place. And then hopefully there'll be a way to prove that the place the money is going to is actually using the funds in the ways that you want. So this is, again, a benefit of a public ledger or blockchain where you can see and track the funds publicly uh, where everyone can make anyone in the world can look at it and be like, yep, they sent the money to this wallet. This wallet is owned by this fund and it's gone to the right place. Don't buy meme also do a 10% to the meme dev fund and then 10% to the charity. 80% goes towards the artist. So basically 90% goes to everyone except for themselves. 10% to charity as well for these auctions is a big deal. And again, another way for these um, money for the money to go to the right places. Uh, Bitcoin is on the move, ladies and gentlemen. We have waited for this for two to three years. In fact, I think basically all of 2018 and, and oh, was it 2019? Actually, all of 2019, we saw Bitcoin go from like, it was on a constant downtrend. So let's look, quickly look at the chart. Um, if it loads up quick enough for us. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh... Okay, so it hit about 5,600. So somewhere around here. So yeah, a lot of 2019 was a big um, downward spiral into, you know, a, a very scary territory. And then now we've seen a lot of upward trending. And I think it looks like it's going to break. This has been a four years. This has been three years between this and this. So if you guys remember the 2017 hype. We, you know, it took two to three years for it to come down and find its balance back up. But it looks like it's broken out of this, the last highs, um, apart from the all time high. And so if we start to see this going up, then, you know, we might see a lot of wealth moving towards the crypto space. And what normally happens in the NFT space when an event like during events like this is we see a big run up, a lot of money focused on Bitcoin, then that Bitcoin goes towards the altcoins and then people distribute that wealth across the NFT space. And if you guys remember in December, um, late December is when, you know, we hit the, the peak of the bull run. And that's also conveniently the same time where crypto kitties started seeing their six figure sales. So, you know, once people are sitting on that same Bitcoin that they were sitting on three years ago, and suddenly that same Bitcoin is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars or that portfolio is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases millions of dollars some people put in like 20k and you know by the end of 2017 we're on paper worth like a million dollars plus and when, once that sort of money starts to be actualized and people are like well i'm not going to do the same thing i did last time i'm going to throw this money in nfts instead of keeping it here we might see a lot of that move towards the NFT space, or we might see the NFT space get squeezed pretty hard. So we don't know what's going to happen. In fact, um, for the last three years, we've seen a Bitcoin kind of go down for the most part of the last three years, which has kept a lot of stability in the NFT space and a lot of growth in the NFT space. And so this is the first time where we're going to experience a bull run like this and then eventually see what that would mean for the NFT space. So for me, it's very exciting. Um, and I think for anyone that is in this space, we'll, we'll, we'll learn a lot and it'll, and, and the new people that will be onboarded, you know, it's going to bring this whole wave of money, whole wave of new people. If it goes that way of, you know, mass wealth moving towards the crypto industry. So stay with us. Uh, always exciting to hear the Twitter chatter going ar uh, around and uh, share what I know and hopefully get some feedback from you all. Take care. I'll see you guys tomorrow.